I think Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown is the most exciting upcoming racing game. However, it's actually kind of difficult to explain why. I've spoken to racing game fans a couple of times and they just don't understand why this game is being hyped up. In this video, I wanted to sit down and write a full answer to that and hopefully by the end of this video you should have a clear understanding of what this game is and why people are getting excited. The primary reason why newcomers are confused by this thing is because all we have right now is two short teaser trailers that don't really show anything. To understand what this game is, we need to turn the clock back 10 years and look at the most recent Test Drive Unlimited game. This is TDU2. So then, looking at TDU2, let's ask the question, what is a Test Drive Unlimited game? Here is how I categorize the TDU experience. Test Drive Unlimited is a driving, racing and lifestyle hybrid taking place in a massive open world with both single player and MMO elements. The series is best known for its truly massive open world and the ability to cruise around it and explore with friends however you choose. To give you an idea of the scale of these open worlds, here is an image by Reddit user Dynamic367 which shows the map size of both TDU2 islands in scale compared to Forza Horizon 4. If I start at the most northern point of Oahu and set a GPS marker to the most southern point, you'll notice that I have to drive just a couple of kilometers to get to my destination. Along the way, I'll encounter plenty of unique roads and scenery while also driving by dealerships and tuna shops to customize my car collection, and even clothes stores and hairdressers to customize my character. During this drive, friends can also join me on my drive seamlessly, when it works, but we'll get to that later. And then we can freely explore the map together. Jump in each other's passenger seats or instantly set up a race event. The interior of my car is fully detailed all the way down to working side windows and the retractable roof and even indicators. This is the TDU experience that most people associate with, but we aren't done yet. The seamless multiplayer matchmaking carries over to the interiors of dealerships and other buildings around the map. So we randomly run into players like it's a living, breathing world. Inside the dealership we can walk around, inspect vehicle interiors, and even flick through the list of optional extra rims and interiors the car is sold with. Dealership interiors match the personality of the manufacturer they're representing, Ferrari has a grandiose red carpet staircase leading to their newest car at the time, the 458 Italia, whilst the interior styling of the entire building just screams Ferrari. Audi on the other hand have nothing of the sort, it's clean, organised and efficient, exactly how you'd expect. Test Drive Unlimited demands that you have somewhere to store all these cars, which is where player houses and garages come into play. Each house comes with a specified number of garage slots and you'll need to keep on top of buying properties to build up a large car collection. The furniture, floor and walls of these houses can even be customised because of course it can, it's TDU. Whilst other racing franchises attempt to design a concise and focused experience, TDU 2 often simply throws in a feature because it can and the world feels more fleshed out as a result. In terms of growing your bank account so you can spend extortionate amounts of money on cars and coffee tables, you have a few different options here. The Free Ride Instant Money System, or the FRIM, allows you to bank money in free mode by drifting, near missing, or getting airtime. However, a crash resets you to zero. Each level you can either bank the money so far, or risk the next level for exponentially more money. It's basically the weakest link with irresponsible driving, except instead of dealing with Anne Robinson, we have to deal with these insufferable fuckers, which brings me quite nicely onto the single player campaign, which is known as the Solar Crown. That's where the new game's name is derived from in case you aren't sure why it's called Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. The campaign is the main option for progressing your collection, and it's a pretty standard single player racing game affair where you complete a list of races against AI, win money, and use that money to progress to higher vehicle categories and more championships. 
All topped off with the standard cringe cutscenes that you expect from literally any open world racing game, except in this game it's even worse. Sandwind is my group, and if we're at the top of the charts, it's because I'm as hardcore on the stage as on the road. To all the clowns, you think you can beat me? Yeah, here's what's waiting for you. Do I look like I'm gonna give you an advantage? I'd love to say that cutscene quality will improve in TDU Solar Crown, but I can't exactly say that Forza Horizon 4, The Crew 2, and even Need for Speed Heat have made any steps towards making a racing game narrative that isn't terrible, so I'm not holding my breath. Your final option for progressing in TDU2 comes in the form of multiplayer. This game borrows a lot of MMO elements and there's a ton of multiplayer activities. Solo racing and club versus club racing, co-op modes, online police chasers, and of course, the casino. Most of these things are sadly defunct in 2021. TDU2 servers were shut down back in 2018. However, the TDU World Team, which is a group of community members working to restore TDU2 to its full glory, are working on getting everything functional again. Right now, some things work, like free mode, but many other things don't. Big shout out to those guys, though. Some elements of this video would not be possible without their work. I do also want to give TDU2 the full review that it deserves in the future, but I want to wait until everything functions again so I can do this entire package justice. Hopefully I should get to make that video sometime next year as the TDU World Team is working on it. So why did TDU2 fall short? I've been talking about all these amazing things, so why is it such a niche game? The design of this game is absolutely solid. The execution, however, is sloppy at best. Reason number one why people were turned away from this game, the physics are objectively terrible. Cars lack feeling, there is no way to hold a slide, never mind a drift. Your car will occasionally wreck out from hitting curbs and signposts, but not consistently. Sometimes you will land a jump and your car will flip off the road and you will wreck. Other times the exact same jump you will land perfectly. There is no wonder that people are turned away from a driving game that fails to deliver on its driving experience. The single player campaign is the weakest segment of the game. It can feel quite repetitive and grindy at times. The dialogue gets grating and you will wish it wasn't there. The Eliminator events are some of the most unnecessarily drawn out boring events I've ever seen in a racing game. Driving seven laps of a boring off-road circuit with no challenge from the AI is not fun. The campaign isn't terrible, it's just absolutely nothing stand out from the droves of single player racing game campaigns out there. The single player campaign is the most commonly played part of any racing game. It is extremely important for any game to set a good impression in its campaign if it wishes to retain players. At launch, this game just didn't work properly. There were common bugs that would destroy your save file, matchmaking was always unreliable, some features like clubs or roulette in the casino just didn't work whatsoever at launch, and they weren't patched for months. This is why TDU2 is not the blockbuster racing game that it could have been if its execution was as good as the game design. TDU2 has a lot more to offer, which I haven't covered today. It's not in the scope of this video. Uh, but this is a video about TDUSC, so let's move on to Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Why is that exciting? It's been 10 years. New developer, new publisher. That on its own is extremely fascinating because it's so rare to see with modern racing games. Think of all the racing games that seem to hit a dead end last decade. You've got PGR, Burnout, Blur, Split Second, Modernation Racers, Motorstorm, Drive Club. Even Wipeout's not looking too good anymore. There is next to zero chance that any of those titles I just listed will ever see a new installment. But somehow, some way, over 10 years after the last game, we're getting a new TDU from Killerton and Nacon, and that is wild. Now, if you think of the scope of the multiplayer that was designed in TDU 2, that is now much more technically feasible now rather than 10 years ago. I cannot see us having matchmaking issues, really buggy online play like TDU2, because when you look at modern racing games, 
those sorts of issues are now disappearing and becoming less and less common. I have good reason to believe the physics issues I talked about are not a concern and to understand why we need to look at WRC9. Killerton are the new developers of the Test Drive Unlimited franchise taking over from Eden Games. It has been stated that the KT physics engine used in WRC9 will be powering TDUSC. Now, I've spent time with Assetto Corsa, iRacing, Race Room, Gran Turismo, Forza, and I've done my rounds on the eSports circuit. Take it from me, this is a perfectly solid simulation driving model. Let me explain why. Everything the car wants to do is predictable and accurately communicated to me through feedback. I can pinpoint when the tyres want to give up grip. I'm never surprised by understeer or oversteer. I'm able to induce a slide and hold it there. Weight transfer is a big factor and you'll need to understand that to achieve the fastest times. Everything is perfectly intuitive. The footage you are seeing was recorded within 15 minutes of me booting up WRC9 after spending months away from the game. That's not because I'm an insane driver. It's just that I'm able to drive confidently because I don't feel like I have to learn the physics of a video game. I just feel like I'm driving a rally car. And it's actually funny because all my expertise goes away and sheer panic sets in as soon as I start driving on a loose surface because that is where I am inexperienced. My driving turns instantly potato and that's exactly how it should be because I know I don't have that knowledge as a human being. I really like the driving position of this dash cam view and I hope we see this in TDU. When I'm driving on wheel and therefore have my own steering wheel in my hands, this camera just feels incredibly natural to drive on as if you're in the car. My top nitpick with this game is the windshield. You'll notice that sometimes it has a really ugly reflection effect on it, which is incredibly off-putting. Not only that, but I'm just not the biggest rally fan, which is why I'm excited to see this stuff being potentially applied to another racing game. I think we can all agree that those physics are a stark transition to this. And whilst Killerton may decide to go for more of an arcade driving model than WRC, it doesn't matter. WRC 9 makes me trust that there will be a competent driving model and it will deliver a good driving experience. And let's even be cynical and say that maybe the physics in TDUSC fall short of WRC 9. I am still 100% confident that whatever we get will be better than this. I got grave glitched on the straight. <laughs> oh. The creative director of TDUSC is Alan Jarnu, who actually led the development of TDU2 back at Eden Games. And this is why I'm confident that the spirit and ambition of Test Drive Unlimited will not be lost despite the change of studio. So it's been confirmed the location of the game is an island built to 1-1 one, one scale. That means one kilometer in the game will equal a kilometer of the real life island. We've already seen a bunch of cars and they all seem to fit the TDU spirit. Lamborghinis, Bugattis, Ferraris, Koenigseggs have all been sighted. The casino from TDU 2, which is something that I haven't even mentioned in this video, is making a return. And we also see many of the excessive details that TDU is known for in the trailers. Key fobs for every car. And we've only seen the, the hands of two characters, but the attention to detail is already looking insane for character customization. It is worth bearing in mind that this is a pre-rendered trailer, so things might change. The Steam page lists the game as an MMO and describes the general setting of the game. All of this seems to point to us getting a full-fledged TDU experience. It's all really exciting stuff. It seems like we have a proper next-gen successor to TDU2 coming up, and now I just want to learn more about the game. So hopefully if I've done my job properly in this video, you should now understand why this game is a super exciting prospect to a lot of people. It's still quite mysterious at the minute because we've not seen that much. However, this early stage of announcement, it seems to be hitting all the right notes, and I just can't wait to see what game we are delivered. I hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different from me, uh, I had to dial back my script a little bit to stop myself from going on massive tangents about TDU2 and to make sure that my PC didn't explode during the edit. Hopefully it still turned out alright. Feel free to do all that regular YouTube stuff if you want to help out. And actually, just before I go, 
I've been slowly working on my final GT Sport video for a while now. Uh, the script is a beast, and I have no idea how I'm going to go about producing it. <laughs> but uh, that's coming eventually. But thanks for watching this one. Take it easy, and I'll catch you later.